Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another Pacific Angler fly tying tutorial. We are in the man closet and with steelhead season coming up, I thought to start showing you guys some of the basic patterns that I use to round out a steelhead box. Today we're looking at a very simple string leech that I call the river rat. It's one that's been in my box for many years in different variations and it's going to be a fun one for you guys to play with because we can tweak it to a bunch of different colors. So this is what she looks like. What we're going to do is uh, I'm going to show you how to tie this version first and then I'll do some variations in fast motion at the end of this video. So make sure to check that out, stick around for the end. So this pattern is one that's fairly basic and fairly, I want to say universal, but it's, I, I use it, I use it a lot on the Bulkley in relatively clear water, uh, times that uh, we wanted not a big presentation or the classic sort of intruder. We're starting off with basically any hook shank you want. We are going to cut it. Um, and so don't worry too much about that. Just look for the overall length of any hook shank. Uh, I'm using actually a saltwater one right now because it just happened to be on my desk. As always, we're going to well, we're going to use a bead, and as always, we're going to jam up the thread up into the top of the bead before we get going with the major part of the fly. I usually do this twice to give myself a bit of a bump or block to keep that bead from slipping uh, when the fly is fished. Make sure it's built up fairly heavy. I'm using an orange bead in this instance. Uh, I think orange is probably the most popular one I use. Sometimes I just use a gold bead or sometimes no bead at all. Uh, but the orange bead seems to work well for me for most uh, most rivers for steelhead. That sort of classic egg sucking leech look. Now I'm going to go back whatever shank I'm using. And you're going to go back as far as you want for the size of the pattern. I like tying this pattern relatively small. So I'm using roughly about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half uh, from the bead. And I don't want to get into wrapping on where the hook uh, bends. Uh, then we're going to take our trailer material. And uh, the wonder of this pattern is we are going to run the hook up into the uh, deer or the sorry, rabbit hair that we're using today. So we don't need something to be too stiff. Um, we don't need wire. Uh, I actually prefer uh, a braided material. Um, and again, how we tie in braid for any steelhead, leave yourself about two millimeters of a gap um, before the front of the fly. Tie it in on the side. This is the back side. And then double over that piece like that. And you see that. I'll tilt that up. We're going to double that guy over. That's going to give this fly the strength it needs. So we obviously don't want this trailer ripping out on a fish. And there we go. That's going to be nice and strong. Now for length of trailer, we want it as small as physically possible. So you're going to have to do some measuring. Um, and so grab whatever hook you're going to use. I'm using a four right now. Um, you can tie this with a six or even as big as a two but a four seems to be decent in any of your standard trailer hook. That's just messed up there with. So here we have it, and I'm going to reach, I'm going to flip the hook upside down. I'm going to put it back in as far as I could take the trailer material, and I'm going to come up here and loop it at the hook. So I just made sure I made a notch in it, just made sure it's big enough at the biggest part of the hook. Now I can put the hook away knowing that this turn here, this bend, if I crease it right there, I'm going to have uh, roughly the right length and not too much length. So we'll crease it in and then I'll run this down the other side. Uh, this is a pretty universal way we can run trailer wire or trailer material of any sort and you always want to be doubling it over. Now before I finish this I'm just going to trim that guy because that's a little bit long. Now, as always, if you guys have watched my videos before, you know this, but I do wrap backwards, so I apologize in advance if this looks a little bit off to you. Um, but uh, it should be pretty straightforward if you switch directions. So here we go. There's our trailer. There's our setup. Now we're going to uh, do a flash body. And the flash body I like to use in this instance is... Uh, electric blue flash. Uh, this is a small flash. There's a bunch you can do with bodies. Uh, funnily enough, I use this. It's just sort of out of habit, but it was pretty common when we were up guiding. The materials weren't easy to get at the lodge or you'd run out of a material. And so it was nice to make flies simple or use the least variety of materials. And this electric blue flash is a mainstay in a lot of the Skeena slash Bulkley River patterns. 
And so if we could use it in multiple parts, both the wing and the body, we would. It's not very durable, but we're going to fix that, and I'll show you how in a second here. So I'm, I've tied in about uh, probably about eight or nine strands of this, and I'm going to wrap up the body. Now, like I said, we could use Lagerton. I really like Lagerton. Lagerton is one of my favorites. Um, but basically any flash material wrapped around. But there's just something about this color uh, that I really like, and uh, it's something that's worked for me for many years, so I'm not going to fix it. So there we go, up the body, and then we're going to tie that off. Now, if you noticed, I did wrap the same direction. Some guys will go opposite directions with certain materials. Um, when I'm going to be gluing over top, I don't particularly think it matters. And then we're going to pop out our Solares. Um, like I said in previous videos, I use this stuff a ton. Uh, it comes in different thicknesses. I'm using the thin. Uh, there's a bone dry that might work it's even thinner than this that might work well, but the thin seems to do a lot of the work for me. You do a fairly liberal gob on the top of this, and then we're going to go in with our needle, and we're going to space that out around the uh, flasher boot body that we've built. So around we go. If I need to, I'll spin. That looks fairly covered, and then we break out the nuclear light, nail it there. This light's really good. I've had lights in the past that just do not work and are garbage, and I guess there's probably a resin combination, but the solar resin, the nuclear light from solar resin, it may be expensive, but I think it's well worth it. So there we are. We're ready to go. Now we're going to tie in our rabbit, and uh, where did my rabbit go? I had it piece pre-cut and obviously it fell off the desk. That is annoying. Now we're going to have to cut that. There it is, underneath the dry bar. Got it. Okay, so back in it. Here's our rabbit. Now we want to look at where we're going to lay the rabbit and how we're going to lay it. We want to actually run the hook into this rabbit at the end of this pattern. So I want to have it just off the tag of the hide at the back of the rabbit. Now I've pre-cut this, but you always want to come in and put a, an angle on your rabbit at the tail here, making sure not to cut off the fibers at the tips um, and clean up as much of the hide underneath there. And that gives us a nice point that's going to flow well. So I know now that I'm going to put it about there and about there with just a little bit of the hide left at the tail of the loop. That's going to fit that hook nicely into the hide and then we're going to wrap it on. Now some of these styled patterns we would run a wire and we'd wire in the rabbit but I, I find that that sometimes sort of makes the I don't know the, the the material not look as full so I like just hanging it clean it is going to be held down when we run that trailer hook up into the rabbit. Um, I am going to add just a touch more flash. Like I said, I love this electric blue. And uh, I mean, other, other systems, I might use different color combinations. Uh, if I were using different co color combinations on the rabbit, I would probably use different flash. But for any of my blacks and purples, I really like uh, the electric blue. I think it's 6908 is the code. If anyone wants to get really into geeking out on codes and exact color combinations, I'm going to take two strands. I don't want a ton of this. Um, and I'll pass it around the back here, up it goes, we're going to have two down one side. And then I'm going to pass it over under, that could be ugly, we could do that in a different way if we wanted it perfectly straight, but it works for what we're doing here today. And there we have the wing, so to say, and the tail. Now, um, I'm going to use purple for the next step here, we're using a purple flash. And again, I've probably dropped the one, oh no, here, we've got it right in front. Um, and this is a Palmer chenille, and uh, this is a purple Palmer chenille in medium. Medium seems to work the best. You don't want to go to the small unless, unless you're tying this pattern extremely small. Um, but the medium seems to work well. And you could do it with the large as well, especially if you're tying larger patterns or if you just wanted to trim it down. So I'll set myself up there. I'm going to trim this off because I don't want to be working with quite as much material here at the angle of the vise. And again, we're going to palmer this just like we did in any of our other patterns. You know, that arrow pattern uses a similar material to sort of build up some shoulders to a fly. I'm going to wrap that, pick it through as we go. 
And again, we're going to hug the bead a little bit here. We don't want to leave too much of a gap between the bead and the material. Um, there we go. So about four or five wraps of this working it out. And then I'm going to tie it off. So one over, two over, I'll go one in behind, pull it all down. One, two, three, four, smushing everything in. Now I'm going to come in and hit, hit it with my nails a bit, make sure it's nicely clean behind the bead. One, two, three. And I'm going to back two off because I always sort of do that so that I force myself not to build up an overly bulky head. And we'll come in there and clean that up. Okay, so that's the uh, second to last step. And then we are going to take um, a feather and any sort of feather material. Sometimes I'll use guinea for this. Sometimes I'll just use... Um, a standard shellapin uh, works very well. So we're going to use a black style here. I'm going to pick off both sides on the top. Now what I'm looking for, and this is, this is key when you guys are ever wrapping any feather, is look at the stem. I don't want to be wrapping in the thick stuff. If we try wrapping in the thick stuff, it's very hard to tie off. It makes your head really bulky. It also adds a point where a tooth can catch it and sort of blow up the fly. So I'm going to go back until I feel like the stem is thin enough that I can wrap it. Now I don't want to go back too far obviously because I lose length of fiber and then I am going to sort of look at which is the best side. I like the top, the top actually, yeah, yeah the top looks good. So I'm going to peel off about two inches off the bottom and that's garbage. I'm not going to use it and then we're going to come over here. I'm just going to straighten everything up, prepare myself for success so to say. I'm going to pull just a little tag end off there. That's going to give me a spot I can tie in and we're going to come in here and I'm going to tie it in, one, two, and then one in behind it, three, and then we'll trim that guy off. And then we're going to wrap bury it in a little bit if you can, and then twist it and pull everything down on top. Now as I finish it, I'm going to lay my, uh, my thread just over top to sort of help me push all those fibers down. And I might pull on the tag end a little bit here just to make sure it bites in nicely with a nice teardrop or shoulder to the front of this pattern. Two more wraps, now I'm going to come in behind pulling that to three and I'm going to force myself to back one off there. Uh, again, working on keeping that head tight or small. Now I'm going to come in with my nails, sort of smush that all in. I'm going to give one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to back off. I'll well, back off one there. I don't want to get too aggressive. And now I'm going to come in with my whip finisher and finish her off. All right, so that's, we've got her done. That's uh, our river rat style pattern. This purple and black one is sort of a do everything pattern. It's gonna work in lots of different rivers. Uh, great for summer runs, great for uh, bulkly, great for rivers a little bit farther away from the ocean, but great for clear water or pickier fish. And then we've got our pink one. This is my go-to when it comes to rivers. Uh, like the Dean, like the Squamish, a little bit closer to the ocean. Also works excellent on the better when there's not quite as much pressure or you've got fresh fish. And then the maroon one, this is sort of a little secret weapon that I've used. I've hooked lots of different species on this, uh, but this was a great one for the bulk and clear water picky fish. It's also really good for the better when there's a lot of pressure. Uh, this drab sort of color, I think, is harder for the fish to see. And with that, it spooks them less. So guys, that is the river rat style pattern. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, uh, consider checking out some of our other fly tying tutorials. I'll leave a link up here. Uh, we also do the Friday Fishing Report. If you're a Vancouver guy and want to check out that, we do it every Friday. And as always, please consider hitting the subscribe button. If you're new here, hit that like button and we'll catch you in the next fly tying tutorial.